Um, my name is Paul Lejeur. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for Durham Public Schools. Tonight I'll be talking to you about our COVID-related appropriations and the usage uh, overview that uh, we have for you tonight. Um, as I get ready to start off, um, we are unlike the county and city where they received uh, pots of money and they're able to divvy them up how they would, would like to. Uh, schools uh, funded by the state uh, through the federal government as well as state government are, uh, we have to use a chart of accounts that is outlined uh, by the state for the purpose of spending our funds. So we have to utilize uh, how the state delegates and regulates uh, funding to each school district across the state. Just so you know, um, Durham Public Schools usually deals with 13 federal grants on an annual basis. Uh, we have another um, 50 that the state has in play right now through all kinds of COVID related appropriations uh, that the NC Pro team uh, had talked about earlier. Um, and uh, we only have at this point in time, 11 of those grants in Durham Public Schools. So if you could go to the next slide, please. So our COVID related appropriations are, we'll talk tonight about are the, the, the big three, um, the CARES Act funding uh, that was given to us back in May. Um, also our coronavirus funding that was enacted in December of 2020 and the enactment of the American Recovery Plan that was in March of 21. Understand that we are regulated under the Elementary and Secondary Schools Education Act, and therefore all these funds uh, will be used for the purpose of educating students in Durham Public Schools and private schools across our uh, Durham County uh, borders. Um, that is one part of the funding uh, that we have to flow through. I think we have about $700,000 set aside for that, uh, which is important for people to know that it's not only for Durham public school use. At the bottom, you'll be able to see uh, the types of money we received uh, for CARES Act, ESSER, as we call it, ESSER 1, uh, ESSER 2, and ESSER 3 with the expiration dates as well. Uh, the first pot of money that we have ends in September of 2022. Uh, that was primarily used for the purchase of 20,000 computers, Chromebooks at the beginning of the pandemic. In uh, the, uh, we purchased them in the summer of 2020, um, knowing that we would be going virtually and needed to have uh, units in individuals' hands. Also, we spent, we're spending about two point, almost $3 million on hotspots for those uh, activities so that everyone had a hotspot and was able to connect from home uh, while we were doing virtual learning. Um, so a lot of that money was uh, initially of the $11.9 million. Uh, we spent almost $10 million of that just on ensuring that students had devices and connectivity uh, through the beginning of the pan uh, beginning of the pandemic. Next slide, please. So determining what process was used to determine spending priorities. Again, Durham Public Schools uh, were given guidelines from the federal government as well as the state uh, Department of Public Instruction to determine the learning loss and safe return to school as a priority for spending. DPS used the strategic plan and the input from the school leaders and educators across the district to develop our plans as we tried to get back into school. Um, again, all of our funding is targeted and we'll go through that in a little bit, but from that standpoint, uh, the, the main goal was to get back into school safely. How we diverse, how were diverse community voices integrated into determining the priority? The department heard the device uh, diverse <laughs> voices through the public comments provided at the DPS Board of Education meetings. The board 
was also hearing from the community members and passing their messages along to DPS administration for incorporation into the plan. What spending priorities were determined that specifically relate to youth and education? I have a few listed here, uh, but that's not all of them. Uh, the one-to-one -one laptop initiative uh, with the hotspots for internet connectivity, and as, as well as the cybersecurity that we had to put in place and upgrade for the purpose of ensuring uh, ac safe access and utilization of those computers. We did a lot of tutor, we're doing a lot of tutoring for students. Uh, summer learning opportunities. Last year, we had a summer school program uh, with almost 4,000 kids, I believe it was, was that uh, we had in the schools over the summer. Um, we're going to continue that again this year um, and for the next, well, for the next two years to ensure that we get that learning loss uh, that occurred for the almost a year uh, uh, at home doing virtual learning trying to learn how to utilize uh, the virtual learning uh, landscape. Um, so from that standpoint, this is a critical program and is required by the state that we spend about 30% of our funds on summer learning opportunities to ensure that learning loss is uh, cut, cut down significantly over the, the course of the grants. Social, social and emotional support. We had a big need for social and emotional support. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later um, because students come, even coming back to school was difficult. For some of them, it was their first time coming to school, wearing masks and so on and so forth. It was, it was hard on students to come back as well as staff. Uh, so it was a lot of uh, social and emotional support that we put into the schools. Staff recruitment and retention, key. Uh, for the purpose of us to recruit uh, staffing during these hard times. We had uh, over 700 recruits this year. Normally it's about 250 to 300 that we replace on an annual basis, but this year it's been over 700 uh, staff members that we've had to uh, recruit into positions uh, to ensure that our schools opened and continued to strive uh, towards working on the learning loss of our students. The other key component is our air quality, our HVAC systems to ensure a clean environment for our students. Outdoor learning spaces is something that came about as well as dining spaces outdoors for the, to ensure that kids could be safely, uh, safely le uh, learning as well as eating outside uh, so they would not be just sitting in their classroom or in the cafeteria group together. Next slide, please. As you see, uh, the real two key pieces that uh, we're working with right now are the ESSER two, which is the $46.5 million and the $104 million ARP funds that were enacted in this past year. With that said, this is a breakdown of how the funds are distributed. Uh, I'll go through uh, some of them real quickly because we're going to hit on them uh, a little bit more as we go through. The big two pieces are our operational services. That's for upgrading of our HVAC systems, as well as the outdoor learning spaces, clean, cleaning of uh, the classrooms and the common areas. Uh, we have uh, contracted with different uh, janitorial services to come in and assist us with that because this is a big piece of ensuring uh, the health and safety of our students and staff in the buildings. In the academic area ser services area, that $53.2 million in the bottom left is being utilized for the purpose of the summer learning where almost $30 million is being provided uh, over the course of the three years to ensure uh, the learning loss and uh, to be able to bring up our reading and math uh, and science um, scores at, that were lost over the, over the time period of being vir out virtually. The other big, two big pieces that I'm gonna talk about are the staff recruitment and retention bonuses, which is $28.2 million. 
And then we'll talk a little bit about the school level strategies, which is approximately $13 million overall. Next slide, please. So as we talked about the, the $53.3 million allocations for academic services, again, $25.1 million in summer learning for 21, 22, and 23. There are other dollars that go into summer learning as well. Uh, we've hired 100, we've provided 100 temporary two-year school-based positions uh, for, for the schools to have to ensure that that they can meet the needs of the students as they came back into the in, back into the schools. That included 55 learning acceleration positions, 22 high needs and specialized support positions, such as exceptional children, uh, English learners, um, and others uh, in the pre-K area for the purpose of ensuring our pre-K classes were also taken care of. And 23 social and emotional support positions. Those are the positions that I talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, those support positions are mental health counselors as well as school counselors. We provided additional support in those schools where they needed it uh, for the purpose of ensuring students came back and had the, those supports in place. Uh, we have 40 district wide itinerants school support positions. Uh, they include eight digital teaching and learning coaches in the budget, 10 media tech assistants to support the schools uh, with their, their needs in regards to uh, all the Chromebooks that we're using, uh, 10 behavioral support positions, four literacy integration specialists, four EC specialists, three multilingual resource center positions, and outdoor learning specialists to be able to assist in organizing and generating uh, the appropriate spaces for the outdoor learning sites. Next slide, please. So here we have uh, operational services and what it includes. It's $53.7 million. $34.3 million is for facility repairs and improvements to improve the hair quality, which are the HVAC systems, uh, to ensure that we uh, rebuild and maintenance the ones we currently have, clean them uh, completely, and replace those that are needing replacement. We also have filters that we've upgraded to uh, for the purpose of ensuring that the, the, the quality of the air coming in and out is, is captured for the purpose of ensuring we are uh, providing the best quality air for the students on a daily basis when they're in their confined spaces. $8.9 million for educational technology support. That is, these are positions that we've hired to uh, ensure that we have the support in all schools uh, to have the one-to-one -one implementation in place. Uh, we only had uh, a tech champion in each school previously. And this was to ensure that we had the, the technical support uh, for the purpose of, of anything that went wrong in our schools in regards to connectivity, uh, to sustain uh, the Wi-Fi connectivity in the schools, as well as any break fix uh, needs of the computers that, that uh, of the 20,000 that we had and over 30,000 that we have in the schools. We have $6.2 million for the cleaning and disinfecting. As I mentioned that earlier, that that was a critical piece that we've used contractors as well as uh, custodial staff for the cleaning and disinfecting of our schools. We have 2 million set aside for transportation. Uh, that is to support the extended programs uh, that we have going on across the district uh, after school ends, as well as the summer programs that we need to transport kids uh, to and from schools. We have some set aside for our child nutrition program to ensure that we um, can meet the needs of, of, of the lost revenue that we're, we may receive from uh, the federal government due to meals not being uh, as 
as much in in need as as parents sending it in with their child to ensure that they have the meals that they want. Um, and as well as the outdoor dining, we also uh, committed uh, over six hundred thousand dollars for that as well. Next slide, please. So as I spoke before, I didn't hit on all the things in the pie charts. Um, we also put aside school level strategies, uh, 13.3 million. Those are, those are earmarked for the schools to determine what their needs are. This year we had uh, requests for up to uh, close to $2 million this year um, for the purpose of tutoring, um, enhanced uh, learning sessions, uh, throughout the day uh, for additional staffing in the classrooms as well to support anything and everything that's needed uh, on a daily basis to ensure that our students will get that learning loss behind them and start moving forward and uh, being socially and emotionally happy. We have staff recruitment and retention initiatives. We have done a one bonus so far this year of this retention of 1,538.50. Uh, we listened to the community, to the teachers, to the, the, and the rest of the staff. We are putting out an additional $1,500 in March of this year, and also a, a retention bonus in October of 22. So we've, we started off with the 1538 uh, that went out in November and uh, provided additional resources to do this. And in doing these additional two bonuses, it's costing, or we've adjusted our budget uh, with the board approval uh, to the tune of uh, $15 million uh, coming out from all the programs uh, to ensure that we can make these retention bonuses available. Earlier on, I talked about Seven, over 700 staff uh, that we hired this year. We have uh, these recruitment bonuses ranging from $1,500 to $8,000 over three years uh, for the purpose of bringing in the best into Durham Public Schools to ensure that we had our classrooms filled and uh, that we had quality instruction and staffing in the buildings. We have some other major allocations uh, for administrative services, uh, $2.5 million uh, to cover additional utility costs. What well, we did learn that uh, when we put in the upgraded MERV 13 filters into the buildings to do a better cleansing of our air circulation, uh, we had to run our school HVAC systems 24-7 to ensure that we were getting air in and quality air out. Uh, and that's part of the MERV 13 uh, filter guidelines that are required to ensure uh, that the systems work appropriately. Um, we also have 1.6 million uh, for COVID-19 teams. We have 10 contract tracers. We have a communi uh, communication specialist and a team manager that oversees the uh, communication to the board uh, to ensure that the board is aware of what's going on in the schools on a daily basis. The contract tracers are finding out uh, of those children that are tested and, and found to be positive, uh, contract tracing on those children to ensure that families know uh, if a child in there has been uh, in a close contact situation um, with a student that had COVID. Um, that's an ongoing thing. We have testing every week uh, and are required to uh, report out uh, on a daily basis. We have $965,000 uh, for those recruitment bonuses that I talked about a little bit earlier, that $1,500 to $8,000. Um, again, over 700 of those have been put out this school year alone. Uh, and then 600,000 in before and after school programs to ensure that our services can continue to support uh, the children that are there before school and have after school needs uh, 
while their parents are at, at work. Next slide, please. So how much of the remaining funds is there to be allocated? Well, there's not a lot. Um, there's about $12 million uh, from that standpoint in school level strategies that have not been targeted for use at this time. All the other funding that we have are out there and to ensure that we are um, following the state guidelines and, and hitting those top priorities that the state has uh, emphasized to all school districts across the state. Those dollars will be looked at uh, in the beginning of next year uh, and rebudgeted for the purpose of meeting the needs of the schools. What is the timeline for determining those allocations? This is an annual thing for us uh, regarding federal funds. Uh, we have to develop budgets on an annual basis. And to do that, uh, we will strategize on the use of the funds to ensure student growth opportunities are addressed. How can the community be involved in the next round of funding priorities and proposals? When will these engagement opportunities happen? Input is always welcome, especially through our public comment. Uh, the budget development process that began in January uh, and is ongoing through the budget cycle, which ends in April, when the Board of, Board of Education finalizes their budget each year. You can send emails to uh, myself, uh, our public affairs office, um, or um, you can show up at, at board meetings and, and discuss your, your wants uh, as far as what we can do for the purpose of uh, ensuring the, the, the allocations are appropriate for student needs. I do believe that uh, it brings us to our current allocations and spending. Well, we went over a lot of them, uh, but I just wanted to point out these two from the standpoint of ensuring that we're uh, making sure that you understand that our priority uh, is to the mental health and school counseling positions uh, for the students um, for the next two years. We want to ensure that those students have every opportunity to have someone to talk to uh, about any problems that they have that they've had over the last year and trying to get them to be more engaged in the in the day to day schooling of uh, that they have been out of over a year. Um, we also have $50.5 million to improve that air quality, uh, put up permanent outdoor learning spaces and enhance school cleaning and disinfecting to ensure we are, our environments are safe for all students. 